When we got the news, it was overwhelming. And I just remember feeling like I wanted to get in my bed and pull the covers over my head and start the day over. Um, but you can't. Another mom called and said, I know you want to lay in bed and you don't have time. When I was diagnosed with DIPG, they told me that I had about nine months to live. And after doing the math, I found out that that would be one day before my 21st birthday. In that moment, I didn't really say anything. I definitely did not cry. It felt like it wasn't real. You know, I felt like I was a healthy kid all the way through. I didn't even get sick very often. Like, I, I just thought it couldn't be me, you know? This doesn't happen to people like me. And so I was just completely shaken. And uh, since that moment, my life's never ever been the same. Um, things that I thought were important are no longer important at all. I went through 30 rounds of chemo and radiation. For us, this tumor has never been about a termination date. Even though he clearly was given nine months to live, I've always looked at it as what do we need to do the next week, the next month, what's the backup plan? And we're just not ready to think that's end of life yet. Pediatric brain cancer is really unique. It is the greatest um, cause of death of children with cancer. So it's a high unmet need. So how do you deal with an unmet need? Well, you get scientists engaged who really care about the disease in their laboratories. You get clinical scientists who want to develop good therapies. And then you engage the community of people. We started PNOC to be a bit disruptive. We wanted to work much more quickly and to have much more flexibility and freedom. We get tissue from every child so that we can look at the RNA and the DNA and then link that to the biology and the pathology and the treatment and the outcome. And then that information, at least the genomics and the laboratory data is deposited into a, a bio repository that's freely available without embargo and not siloed so that any other scientist who even hears about what we're doing has access to that kind of information. We can't sequester that. We have to use that information to make better therapies, and that's what the PNOC working groups will do. PNOC has working groups for medulloblastoma, ependymoma, low-grade glioma, high-grade glioma, and cranial pharyngioma. DIPG, um Normally it is small children. Normally it does grow very, very aggressively and quickly. Getting the diagnosis was tough, but what was, that, what was even tougher is to figure out how truly underfunded DIPG has been. Relatively speaking, pediatric brain cancer gets a very small amount of the budget uh, relegated to cancer in this country. So if we say it takes a million dollars to treat 30 patients, where are we gonna get that million dollars? And if we have to continually go and find that resource, time has passed. And time is something that these children do not have. The average survival of a child with DIPG is nine or 10 months. That's totally unacceptable. And we should be focused on continually learning, not continually trying to fund things. Every child should be afforded the opportunity to have a clinical trial. That's their right, as far as I'm concerned. I don't care who sees the data that they get from my brain as long as they use it to help find a cure. What sets us apart is that we are willing to move briskly, safely, with good peer review, but also not waste time, and to engage a legion of scientists who agree with that. There's no other organization in the United States that does that. Period. Basically, they've, they've taken a idea that's as simple as sharing our ideas with each other and made it global. Pediatric brain cancer is changing quickly. Maybe not quick enough, maybe with more funding it could change even more quickly. Although DIPG is probably one of the hardest things to hear in a doctor's office, I'd say now more than ever um, there's a, an ability to have hope and there's an ability that um, you can really do something to fight this instead of go home and say your goodbyes.
It made me realize that I would be able to be a fighter and uh, definitely fight for a lot longer than nine months. If you're in a kid in a situation like mine, um, trust me, I understand the dark days, I really do. But there's no reason to um, give up yet. There's not, absolutely no reason to give up.